Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. Social media can often show distorted versions of reality. For Derek Medina, however, one social media post was all too real. Derek and his wife, Jennifer Alfonso, lived in Miami and endured tumultuous times during their relationship. The two got married after only one month of dating, but the honeymoon phase did not last long. Derek filed for divorce and Jennifer moved into her own apartment. Soon enough, they reconciled and they got married again. But the second time proved to be like the first, with the arguing just continuing. On August 8th of 2013, Jennifer got mad at Derek because he didn't wake her up on time. She apparently started throwing things at him, then went to the kitchen to make pancakes for her daughter. He walked downstairs and she started hitting him. He walked away and then reemerged with a gun in his hand. Jennifer grabbed a knife, but Derek took hold of it and then shot her eight times. Her 10 year old daughter was upstairs the entire time. Surveillance cameras in the house caught the shooting, but it gets worse. Derek left the house with his murdered wife in the kitchen and the young girl still in her room. Then he posted a photo on Facebook of his dead wife. And he even wrote on Facebook quote, I'm going to prison or death sentence for killing my wife. He surrendered to police and was charged with Jennifer's murder, though he claimed that he killed her in self-defense. In March of 2016, a jury found Derek guilty of second degree murder and other charges. He appealed the conviction, but in November of 2018, the appellate court upheld the lower court's verdict and sentencing. Let's take a look back at the case involving a mother's murder and her husband's decision to display his actions for all to see on Facebook. Jennifer Alfonso was everybody's friend. Jennifer was very kind and caring. Her heart was just so pure. It allowed people to be vulnerable and open with her because she was such a good person. Jennifer, a single mom of a young daughter, met Derek Medina while waiting tables at Denny's in South Miami. Derek Medina was a real Miami character, someone who was really a narcissist, someone who was really self-involved. Someone who fancied himself a jack of all trades. He was someone that wrote a series of self-published electronic books that virtually nobody read. Books with catchy titles like How I Save Someone's Life and Marriage and Family Problems Through Communication. And If the World Ended Today, How Would You React to Saving the World or Helping the World or Would It All Be Over for You? In addition to writing, he was an amateur boxer and also an aspiring actor. But Derek wasn't finding much success in Hollywood, so he tried his luck on a smaller screen. Record me, man. I'm trying to get my kicks. Often posting clips of himself on social media. I think Derek really craved that attention from the outside world. Derek was getting attention from Jennifer and they were on the relationship fast track. Within the first month of dating, they married. One of their common interests, the supernatural. Her and Derek used to go see ghost tours in different cities. Reportedly, Derek even put cameras up in the house hoping to catch their own spirit or two. They were sort of interested in things outside of the mainstream, but they made a really unique pair. Unique and also volatile. They fought a lot. They would just fight about silly things. He would break up with her often. He would throw her things to the side, insult her, and then ignore her. Jen used to call them Mexican standoffs. She would surrender often. You know, she loved him. But love wouldn't be enough. Derek eventually filed for divorce. So Jennifer moved into an apartment and she was doing very well. And then he started contacting her again. Whatever he said or did worked. The very next day they were getting married at the courthouse. Like the very next day. So a second ride on the marriage go round, but the relationship was as tumultuous as ever. He was very late. Like sick in the head. He would tell her things to make her sad or to scare her. One time when he heard another man was hitting on Jennifer at work, a jealous Derek allegedly said, I'm gonna stay at Denny's with a gun outside and <laughs> I'm gonna see if he's gonna f me. And we would tell Jennifer like, hey, he's a little crazy. Like he's gonna kill you, man. And she, she would just look at us and laugh. 
there was nothing funny about what was to come. It's early on this hot summer morning and Jennifer is fuming. She had asked Derek to wake her up. Derek didn't, so she was upset. The argument starts in their bedroom. She started throwing things at him, like a typical type of fight that they would have. After that, Jennifer goes downstairs, reportedly to go make pancakes for her 10-year-old daughter, who's still up in her room. The surveillance camera in the house shows Jennifer in the kitchen. 27 minutes later, Derek appears. Eventually, Derek follows her down there. They continue going at it, and she actually starts hitting him in the chest, and he walks away. Back upstairs to his bedroom. Moments later, Derek comes back down to the kitchen, and this time, he's not empty-handed. When Derek comes downstairs, he has his gun with him. Reportedly, Jennifer grabs a knife to defend herself, but she won't have it for long. Derek disarms her of the knife and puts the knife back in the drawer. Then, seconds later, Derek empties his gun, shooting an unarmed Jennifer eight times. In full view of the camera, you just see this swirl of gunpowder, and it really was a chilling bit of footage. As the blizzard settles, Derek calmly walks away. He puts his gun back in the closet, then tells Jennifer's daughter to stay in her room. You know, no regard to the fact that he just shot her mother dead when she's lying on the kitchen floor. Derek goes back to the kitchen, this time with his phone in hand, but he's not going to call for help. What he's about to do will send a chill down your spine. When I saw it, I realized that it was real. I just can't believe it. Jennifer Alfonso is lying murdered in her kitchen. Shot eight times at point blank range. But this is no whodunit. Her husband, Derek Medina, is the killer, and the chilling crime is caught on their home surveillance video. It showed him coming in, arguing with Jennifer. It showed him leaving and then re-engaging, and we know that he's shooting at her. Moments later, the video shows Derek looking down at his phone as he walks back to the kitchen. He stands there for a minute, then walks away, his phone still aglow. After one more perverted peek at her, another camera captures him coolly walking out the front door, zipping up his hoodie, and locking Jennifer's bullet-ridden body inside with her 10-year-old daughter. Not long after that... I woke up to a whole bunch of messages and calls. In one of those text messages, an incredibly disturbing photo. A photo of Jennifer on the floor of her kitchen, slumped back, bloodied, and seemingly dead. But is she? I thought it was a joke. I thought that Jen was really playing some role in Walking Dead or something, and I'm like, all right, whatever, dude. It makes you happy. But this is not one of the occult-loving couple's zombie pranks. This is dead serious. Within minutes of murdering Jennifer in cold blood, Derek morbidly took a photo of her dead body, then posted the gruesome photo on his Facebook page and hers. The post with it went something like, rest in peace, Jennifer. That wasn't all. Evidently, Derek had more to say in another Facebook post. He wrote, I'm going to prison or death sentence for killing my wife. Love you guys, miss you guys. Take care, Facebook people. You will see me in the news. My wife was punching me, and I am not going to stand anymore with the abuse. So I did what I did. I hope you understand me. So I was just like, what the did you just say? See you on the news. Like, did you? Did you kill your wife for a tent? Like, why did you kill this lady, man? So where is Derek Medina? Reportedly, after killing Jennifer, Derek goes to his aunt's house and then with his father. He turns himself in to the police department down the street. 
here on South Miami Police Department surveillance video is the moment Derek arrives. Cops take him into custody and learn Jennifer's younger daughter is still at the house alone with her murdered mother right downstairs. Cops rush over and bust the door open to get her. They find Jennifer's body and then they go upstairs and they find the, the daughter and they put like a sheet over her head so that she wouldn't see her mom's body as she walked past the kitchen. With Jennifer's daughter safely out of the house, the focus turns back to Derek. Early this morning, you turned yourself into the South Miami Police Department, correct? Yes, sir. And why did you do that? Because I'm not a kidder. I do not feel that I am uh, guilty. This was self-defense. Derek says Jennifer started the fight, yelling at him for not waking her up. And then she started throwing stuff, objects towards me as a weapon. Mm -hmm. What exactly was it that she was throwing at you? Um, towels, um, mascara, um, creams. I got hit in the face a few times. Did you sustain any injuries at that point? No. And at that point, did she leave the room? Correct. Remember, surveillance video in the house shows Jennifer alone in the kitchen. Derek follows, and they start fighting again. Did she have a weapon in her hand at that time? No. Did there come a point where you went upstairs and obtained your firearm? Yes, after I was being watched, yes. What did you do next? I went downstairs, you know, confronted her, saw what she was doing, and she had a knife in her hand. Did you have the firearm in your hand? Yes, I did. Did she say anything to you at that point? Yeah, I'm, you know, you're not going to kill me, blah, 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 and just like, you're a and all that stuff. Derek tells cops he got the knife away from Jennifer and put it back in the drawer. Was she armed with any other weapon at this time? No. What happened next? She just started firing punches like crazy and wouldn't stop again. But she was really, like, like, really attacking me. Like, I was getting out the way, I got hit in the arm, and she was, like, going for my temple. I felt like she was, you know, she was trying to just take me out. So after she hit you in the kitchen, I fired. How many times? I fired away. I shot her. Where did you shoot your wife at? From the neck to the stomach. And do you know how many times you actually hit Six your wife? Six to eight times. Oh, well, everything that was in there hit her. Everything that was the full round. So every five, every round that you fired hit your wife. Correct. It's a chilling admission. When you shot your wife, did she say anything? No, she just kept on trying to attack me. She was in shock, she had an expression, like she was shocked, but she still was trying to swing at me, trying to lunge at me. And what did you do with the gun after you shot her? I put it upstairs um, in the closet again, and then I, I talked to my stepdaughter, I told her to hey, keep this door closed, don't come downstairs, and then I went downstairs, I took the picture, and then I just locked the door. What did you take a picture of? Of her. Was she deceased at that point? Yes. And why did you take a photo? So the family would know and be notified and they can rush over there and get my stepdaughter. And what did you do once you took that photo? Uploaded it on Facebook. Detectives dig deeper into Derek's background. Was there ever a point in time where you were a amateur boxer? Yeah. What was your record as amateur boxer? 25 and 0. And that means that you never lost a fight? Correct. What injuries did you sustain today? Um, I have marks on my chest, my right side of the chest, and my left arm is bruised. Severe pain. Are any of those injuries life-threatening? No. But, I mean, it feels like it. They, they, they said it was just bruised, but I don't know if it's fractured, but I feel severe pain towards the left arm. Did you feel that her punching you in the arm and chest would ultimately kill you? Correct, I was more concerned about the temple. But let me ask you, the injuries to your arm and to your chest, mm -hmm. those were not life-threatening injuries, correct? No. Well, maybe my chest. Maybe my chest, yes. My arm, no. My chest, yes. Really, a boxer with a 25-0 and record, someone who prides himself on being a tough guy, feels his life is being threatened by a petite, unarmed woman cops seem skeptical. And why did you not call 911 from the residence? Because I figured that I had to 
saw it on my eye. And with that, Derek Medina is arrested and charged with first degree murder. But is everything as it seems? If you look at the video and if you watch what happened, the aggressor attempts to lure the other person to keep facilitating the fight. That's what Jennifer Alonzo did here. Derek Medina just confessed to not only killing his wife, Jennifer Alfonso. I fired away. I shot him. But also ghoulishly posting a photo of her murdered body on Facebook. And then this shocker from Medina. The same guy who bragged to police about being an amateur boxer with a 25 and 0 record tells investigators he shot his wife eight times in self-defense, even though she didn't even have a weapon. Are any of those injuries life-threatening? No. Well, I mean, it feels like it. But cops and prosecutors didn't buy it. Derek Medina is charged with first-degree murder. The murder of Jennifer Al Alfonso was a huge case in Miami. We've had a lot of bizarre murders in Miami, um, but this one really was in a different league. Just because of the fact that Derek put Jennifer's body on Facebook really said something unreal about the digital age. A little over two years later, Derek Medina goes on trial. The atmosphere in the courtroom was very emotional. It was very raw. First up, the prosecution's opening statement. He shot her. Not one time to get her off him. Not twice to make her stop. Ladies and gentlemen, the evidence will show that he emptied the clip. Eight shots at Jennifer, causing 21 entry and exit wounds. And what did he do then? He did what people do when they win. He told people about it. He took a picture of her and he posted it on Facebook. Calling many witnesses over several days, the prosecution lays out its case, asserting that Derek walked away from the fight not to leave, but to get his 380 caliber gun. According to Mr. Medina's statement, at what point exactly did Jennifer pick up the knife? After he entered the kitchen with a uh, fire. He fired, emptying his gun, then took a photo of her bullet-ridden body and posted it online. Next, it's the defense's turn. They allege Jennifer still had the knife in her hand when Derek shot her. <laughs> Derek's defense for the trial was that he acted in self-defense and that he was a victim of, uh, of, of spousal abuse. Spousal abuse? Remember, this is a self-proclaimed tough guy who was unbeaten as an amateur boxer. Defense attorney Sam Zangane shows surveillance video from the morning of the murder, claiming while Jennifer was alone downstairs, she went to the front door, opened and closed it, setting off the sensor to bait Derek to get him downstairs so he would re-engage in their argument. How far did she open that door? A crack. A crack. She did that to lure Derek back downstairs. And the interactions that occurred after that resulted in, in the incident in the kitchen. The defense also plays a video of another altercation between Derek and Jennifer, suggesting she'd been the aggressor at least one time before. Well, let's play it. What did Jennifer Alfonso do to Derek and Dina? Push him out of the way. So the video shows her striking him first, correct? Yes. Is my client able to keep her in the house? No. No further questions. Those images of Jennifer can't compare to what jurors are about to see next. A videotaped interview with her 10-year-old daughter, the only other person in the house that fateful morning. She describes hearing the fight from her bedroom. Then the girl describes the moment cops led her out of the house right by her mother's body. I couldn't see the whole entire thing because they're blocking me. And there's so many police in the house. The 10-year-old is then asked 
if there is anybody in her family she fears. The only one who I'm afraid of that is you. And why not? Because you like me and stuff for the agent and all. After more than two weeks of testimony, closing arguments. All of the evidence supports that he premeditated which makes him guilty of first-degree murder. And what she did, the position she put herself in there again, constitutes the justifiable use of any force. Would Derek Medina, playing the defense card, work with the jury after six hours of deliberations, the verdict? We, the jury, find as follows as to count one of the indictment charging first-degree murder. The, defense, the defendant is guilty of second-degree murder. Guilty of second degree murder. It wasn't self defense. His life couldn't have been in danger. And if it was for one second, it was only as a result of him bringing a gun downstairs. Almost three months later, Derek, who did not take the stand in his own defense, chooses to speak at his sentencing. Is this the spotlight moment he's been waiting for? I will be suing this world. I did not get a fair trial and I will be taking action, I will be suing, nothing further. And oh, God knows the truth, and nothing further. Derek Medina is sentenced to life in prison, though he is appealing his conviction. There was a substantial amount of evidence that we weren't able to introduce. We had uh, photographs in her phone with regards to satanic rituals. There's a lot of things that we had that we wanted to introduce, but the court limited our ability to educate the jury with regards to that. It was a tragic case. I mean, Jennifer didn't have to die. Why not just walk away? Why kill her? I think Derek wanted to show the world what he had done to finally get that attention that he had been craving for years. For Daisy, Jennifer's absence is still painful and incomprehensible. After all this time, I still don't believe it. I've never lost someone that close to me. And someone that special. Why her, you know? Like, she, she was amazing.